Yeah. Hi everyone, um, I'm Denise and I'm here today to talk about a little project of mine called I Can't Adult Today. Um, this project is in the sort of research and development stage. Uh, so my hope this evening is to just uh, share with you the direction that my research is taking and a few ideas that um, we might say are still in their infancy. So, full disclosure, I first encountered this meme on online parenting forums where surprisingly not, perhaps there is an absolute um, plethora of, of uh, shares and links to different kinds of merchandise that sort of reflect this shared sentiment of defeat when it comes to the expectations of adulthood. Uh, this, coin, this term, to adult, the verb, was first coined in 2011 by this, um, this lady, Kelly Williams-Brown, and flash forward to um, uh, 30,000 average users per month on Twitter and uh, 85,000 posts on Instagram, and it means to act in a responsible and grown-up fashion. So, why do we feel like we're failing at adulthood? And if we do feel like we're failing at adulthood, uh, what are the measures that we're using to judge that? And um, are there any concrete, let's say, socio-political, economic uh, obstacles to performing adulthood today? Now, it's fair to say that um, in our current climate, many people are either locked out or opt out of traditional signifiers of adulthood. Uh, for example, marriage or home ownership. And equally, a lot of people feel hindered when it comes to accumulating a certain amount of say, social um, capital. So, the curatorial project I Can't Atolt Today explores how contemporary artists are interrogating and reinterpreting typical signifiers and concepts of adulthood, youth, and seriousness and frivolity, asking if adulthood is all it's cracked up to be. And I propose to explore this perhaps in three different aspects. So, an exhibition. <laughs> which will um, present work by artists working across varied mediums, all of whom um, address the images and demands of adulthood. And um, I'm going to be talking about them in relation to three motivational quotes, which I think summarise some of the uh, malaise. So don't be a dolphin, be a dolphin not a do dinosaur. Uh, this is basically corporate speak for be really adaptable, um, be agile so you can adapt to our changing climate. And the um, artists Claire Healy and Sean Cadero, for example, have long uh, examined the necessities to using sort of Lego and Ikea have this adaptable lifestyle. Similarly, Nick Santoro and um, Agatha Gostein sort of address the contortions of this everyday life in Santoro's case in relation to the housing crisis and for Gottsnape in relation to the sort of professional expectations to distill complex ideas into consumable, bite-sized ways of communicating. You've got what it takes, but it'll take everything you've got. Um, this refers to the exhaustion that comes with an aspirational sense of adulthood. And the collective 110% um, explore this idea of achieving an, a sort of ideal artistic uh, connection by scaling an imaginary mountain together. Similarly, Angela Brennan and Raffa uh, Raffaella Pandolfini address it. Brennan in the case of infinity plus one, exploring the artistic imperative to explore the innumerable uh, forms of painting. And for Pandolfini, her, she performed a dance every night of her pregnancy, referencing the ongoing labor of commitment to family. Then this sort of third don't look back refers to practices such as Destiny Deacon, Virginia Fraser, and also Gary Trins, which look to our past, um, questioning whether the images of our um, childhood or ad adolescence continue to haunt us. Do we ever leave them behind? So um, I'm thinking about public programs that could accompany this, uh, this particular project and those that are targeted at both kids and adults and question what is suitable for either category. Um, so in the first instance for adults, we may, for example, propose um, some playful storytelling events that would be loosely sort of shaped around the curatorial questions, but hosted by people such as Eddie Sharp from Erotic Fan Fiction, we could also think about maybe some uh, adult targeted craft based workshops for all those DIY aficionados led by figures such as uh, Handy with Scissors. For kids, I thought it would be interesting to um, provide them with opportunities to think about their expectations of adulthood, centering around this, uh, this sort of common refrain when I grow up. Um, they might be creative writing workshops, 
uh, role playing, theatre, sports, or even child led tours of the exhibition. So that comes to the digital legacy. So it's a, I'm, I'm thinking maybe of something like an online catalogue, however, um, complementing sort of curatorial text, images, and commissioned blogs, uh, a digital pin board that's inspired by the proverbial fridge door that provides an opportunity for the public to um, engage with the digital legacy in a Pinterest sort of style. So what are the outcomes that I foresee for this project um, that could be a benefit to the hosting venue um, and also greater artistic dialogue? They are <laughs> participation in a critical dialogue. So posing questions such as how do national macroeconomic shifts impact upon a personal sense of self? Beyond outdated material signifiers, what might be the persisting markers of adulthood? Do we ever leave childhood completely behind? And to what degree is the concept of adulthood culturally specific? Audience building. Now, um, I do have in mind with this project it being um, designed to bring new audiences to contemporary art. So by using these sort of uh, cultural references to social media, um, creating programming that's targeted for both adults and children, the idea is to uh, create a welcoming environment to talk about these sort of uh, broader uh, questions. And that's it. Thank you for listening. <laughs> um.